Hey everybody, this is the uh, next, this is part two in our series on creating custom paths in the FreeCAD Path Workbench using Python. I'm going to run through the basics of setting up your environment in FreeCAD to use the Python console, and then we're going to design a simple part, and I'll show you how to interact with it in the Python console. So if you haven't already done this, go ahead and go to the uh, Edit Preferences menu. There's just a couple settings we want to make sure that we've got set up correctly here. And on the editor tab at the very bottom, there is the setting for keep tabs or insert spaces. And you want to have that set to insert spaces. Python is pretty particular about the distinction about indentation and uh, it treats tabs and spaces differently. Uh, so in this case, if you type a tab, it'll be converted into four spaces, and that's definitely the better way to go. Um, on the Output Window tab, uh, there are two settings for redirecting the internal Python output to the Report View and redirecting the internal errors to the Report View, and you want both of those enabled. That way, if, uh, something, uh, if Python throws an error, you'll be able to see it in, uh, in the view. On the macro tab, there's one setting to show script commands in the Python console that should be enabled. And uh, that's it. Hit apply and OK, and you should be almost set to go. If you don't see these two panes down at the bottom, that's done under view, panels, and you want the report view and the Python console turned on. The Python console is a, a fully enabled Python console. You can uh, enter commands into it and they'll be uh, executed. You can uh, inspect objects. I'll show you how to do that. And uh, any output from this will be displayed in the report view here. Okay, let's go ahead and design our ramp block. Uh, I'm going to open up a new object and uh, I've already switched to the part design workbench so I'm going to create a body and I'm going to create a sketch on the XZ plane. And I'll zoom out just a little bit. Now, the, the ramp block itself is really simple, and it just has a shape that looks about like this. Um, and I could uh, make sure that this is a horizontal, or excuse me, a vertical object. Uh, make sure that one's vertical. Uh, and that, that's it. That's, that's my shape right there, that, or my side profile. But the, because of the way that I'm going to make this, I'm going to need a couple more uh, elements so that I can control some angles very precisely. Uh, so I'm going to add those in right now. One of those is going to be an edge uh, that is, uh, establishes my top angle. And the other is going to be a reference line uh, this way. And I need one more line to connect those two. And this line needs to be vertical, like that. I'm going to select these three, and I'm going to toggle them to construction geometry so they're blue. Now this vertex right here I want to be on the line. So I'll set that constraint. So now you can see that uh, uh, if I move these objects around, my profile is following along. So this front edge is into critical dimension, uh, but I'm going to set it to 12.7 millimeters. That's half an inch. And I'm going to set this distance to uh, about 100 millimeters because that's the size of the metal block that I have to work with. Um, it says that I've got some redundant constraints. That is probably uh, it's uh, it's probably it's this one right here. Uh, this line is set to be horizontal, but both of its points are already locked to the uh, um, to the x-axis. So I can delete this constraint and make FreeCAD a little bit happier. So it says I've still got two con two uh, degrees of freedom in this. And that has to do with this top angle. Now the way that I'm going to mill this part is I need this, this angle to be uh, known and precise. And so I'm going to use a machinist's sign bar to establish the block in the mill and cut the top surface. And the way a sign bar works is it, uh, uh, it, it has a 5 inch between centers 
uh, on the bottom and then you establish the opposite side of this right triangle with a gauge block to set the height. So the gauge block I'm going to use is one inch. That is uh, 25.4 millimeters. And, um, and now the, uh, and then I need to set the, the, this distance or this, the length from this point to the gauge block to the size of my sign bar and that's going to be five inches. So I'll set this and it's five in. Okay. And you see that the, uh, our, our sketch went all green because everything is constrained, nothing else can change. Um, now I'm going to close this and I can view it from front this way and I can hit the pad object and I can pad this out to 40 millimeters which is the width of my block and that looks about like the block we're going to make uh, except without the ridges on the top. Now when I run my cutter back and forth to cut the ridges in this uh, I actually want to prop the block up at, at an angle um, I can kind of simulate that. So it's going to be actually mounted in the mill like that. So what I really need to do right now as, as this exists, it's um, th this is accurately representing uh, how the part, man, my clipping plane is going a little weird. Um, this accurately represents how the part's going to look, but I'm going to change it because uh, for milling purposes I need this angle at twice this because like I said it's going to be mounted in the mill at an angle. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to not one inch but two, 50.8. So uh, while this doesn't quite look like the block we're going to make, you got to trust me that this, the angle of this face is the angle that it's going to be sitting at when we mill it. Now when we write the script to generate our path, uh, we're going to be interacting with this object and with this face particularly. So uh, how, do you, how do you do that? How do you get a reference to an object and query its properties? Well, FreeCAD is divided into two parts. There's the uh, application side, which does all the geometric heavy lifting. Everything uh, related to an object's uh, size, position, uh, and, and other geometric properties has to do with the application. Everything visual, uh, how it looks, how it's rendered, uh, how the user interacts with it is handled by the GUI side of the application. Those two work together. So in order to get a reference to this object on the screen, um, I can uh, select the object and then I can ask the GUI for a reference to it. There, the GUI has a, an object called the selection object which keeps track of everything that is selected on the screen, everything the user has clicked on or hovered over or whatever. So I'm going to say uh, cell for my selection object and I'm going to set that equal to, and I'll ask the GUI dot selection dot get selection x. There are two of these and I'm going to use selection x I'm going to call that method. So in, in Python, you have to, if you're going to call a method, it's uh, open and close parents. And that uh, is going to return back a list of all of the objects that are selected. And I only want the first one that's selected. So I'm going to, uh, in square brackets, put zero. That's the index zero. It's the first one in the list. Um, now I'm going pretty fast here and I'm not diving down in because it's not my intention to teach you Python or the uh, uh, underneath the hood of FreeCAD. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to gloss over a lot of things and hopefully it'll come clear as we start working with the script. But if you have questions, by all means, get on the, the uh, FreeCAD forum or, or uh, chat with me on IRC and I'll try to help out. Okay, so cell is now an object and if I type cell and hit enter it'll return back that it is a selection object and if I hit sel dot uh, and when I hit dot it pulls up this this browser of uh, methods and properties that I can interact with uh, and and these are, are things about the selection object so 
For instance, um, I could ask it for which object are you, are you, which object is selected. So cell dot object. Oh, that's a big O right there. Big O. It says it's a part feature object, and if I say dot, what is the name of that object? It'll say it's pad right here. So I've got this pad object selected, and that's the object that I'm, I have a reference to. But I didn't select just the object, I selected the face in it. So if I ask SEL, do you have sub-objects? It says, yes, it does. So if I say cell dot sub-objects, sub it'll return back that it has one sub-object in there, and that's a face. And I could get a reference to that face and interact with it. But what's that object's name? Well, cell dot sub element names face three. Okay, so here this is a little, uh, a little bit confusing. Objects uh, in in here have a name. Uh, they also have a label, and actually, what you're seeing here is the label. If I were to rename this object, it it would change here, but actually its name would continue to be pad and its label would be whatever I set it to. I close, save the object, reopen it, its name would probably be whatever I renamed it to, but anyway, that gets a little confusing. The point is, is that the object has a name. The face really doesn't have a name, although I'm calling it face3, that is the name that the object refers to its children with. So pad object has a face that it's calling face three. But if I get an, a reference to this face object and ask it for its name, I, I can't because it doesn't have a name. Uh, that's an important distinction because the names of objects can change under certain circumstances. So you want to be careful when you're referring to, say, uh, pad dot face three. That's going to be consistent until something about this object changes and then that face name might change. But that's neither here nor there. That is, uh, uh, for right now, it's phase three, and we can get a reference to it. We can interact with it. We can measure it, find its normal, uh, change its color, or any number of other things. And we can do that all in, uh, in code. So that gives you a quick overview of the selection object, the Python console, and how to get references to objects. And I know that moved very fast, but by all means, if you have questions, ask them. Um, it, it's probably a good idea to just get in and start playing and uh, in the next video we'll get into writing the actual script that's going to interact with this face and generate our path. Oh, I'm sorry, no it's not. The next video we're going to talk about just the basics of the path uh, core objects, the path and command objects. We'll create a simple object and put it on the screen and in the next video we'll write the full script to generate our uh, ridge cutting for this face here. That's it. Join us in the next video. Hope to see you there.